Hi, this is Jason with PlugRadar.com. Today we're looking at Logic Pro X and automation. So we're going to give you the overview of automation and what you can do with it. So I'm going to start by moving over to my mixer page. So I have this set up as a screen set. And on my mixer page, what we'll see is automation within the actual faders, uh, pardon me, within the track itself. Right now it's set to read and it's not turned on. There's no automation on. So as soon as you select it, it's going to turn green. Now I'm going to disable my group just so that you can see it on a single channel itself. And I'm going to solo the kick, for example. So there's the kick. Very boring, right? Now the moment that I'm going to go back to the beginning, if I go in and select touch mode, let's take a look at these four different modes. Read means that it's going to read back automation. So if you record automation of fader moving, then it's just going to play it back for you. And maybe we should start back up a little bit and tell you what automation is. Automation is the awesome, look mom, no hands, where uh, faders can fly on their own and anything can be automated or changed without actually doing it in real time. That it, You can set it up beforehand and you can have uh, yeah, volumes change, pans change, and uh, just about anything within uh, logic change on its own. Um, so most commonly it's volume that we'd use. So read mode, reading back that automation, touch mode, and this, notice that it's going into touch mode. I'm just going to press play. Let's see what happens. And then I'll go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down with the mouse and I'll let go. Okay. So then in touch mode, if I go back to the beginning and press play, it should play back my automation there. There we go. Look, mom, no hands, right? It's moving that on its own. So touch mode allows you to just wherever you're playing, whenever you touch something, it begins to write automation. And the safest mode, once I've done touch, is to go back into read. So if I go back to read, this allows the computer to play back that automation, look at the fader go up and down, up and down, without making any additional changes. So it's a safety mode. If I go back into touch mode, and go back to the beginning and press play, we'll see the fader go. We should see it go. Uh, let's see if I've got it going. There we go. I'm going to grab it. As soon as I grab it and overwrite, I have the ability to overwrite the automation. I can move it and move it up and down. And as it's playing, it will then change the automation. So as soon as I let go, then it settles into where it was last put. Going back to the beginning, pressing play. And then what we have is, look, there's the automation going, right? It's moving the fader and you can see the moves that I made before. It's at any point you could add on to that automation. Next, latch mode. This is great for when you're working in a chorus or something uh, to that effect, that uh, when you go through your song, it will keep your settings as long as you're pressing play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up the mixer within the main page. I'm going to press X to bring up the mixer, just so that we can see this as the song is playing back. And I'm going to jump to our markers here. So there's my intro. Okay, so I'm in latch mode, and let's go back to touch mode and back to that marker. So I'm gonna go back to that marker, I'm gonna turn on cycle loop so that we have it. And then I'm just gonna go in and, you know, do some crazy things with the fader, right? We're moving it up and down, so there. When we go back to that marker, and press play, look at it go, it's in touch mode. So at any point, I could grab it and change it. If I choose latch mode, what it does is for the remainder of playback, it will keep the volume where I put it. So it's gonna overwrite the, the touch. There goes the touch, it's moving the fader, and boom, I grab it, and then let go. Now notice it's overwriting. As soon as I press stop and play, then the fader goes back to the automation that it had. So uh, latch mode allows you to just set a level as long as you're playing, and then it, as long as it's still playing, it's gonna overwrite the previous automation. Write is a scary mode. It should give me a warning. Warning, write mode erases multiple parameters in one go without touching anything. So in most cases, latch or touch is a better way to go. And it is correct. So then what this is, this is gonna allow you to overwrite automation. So it's writing automation at the same time as erasing previous stuff, which is dangerous because if you had some panning going on, uh, even if you wanted to just replace the automation for the volume, it would replace all your automation. So kind of a scary thing. So we are going to go back and just use 
uh, touch would be the safe mode. So that is on the mixer side. Automation, taking a long time to explain all this, right? So hopefully this is okay for you. I'm gonna press X, the mixer is gonna go away. I'm gonna press A on the main page to view automation and we'll just zoom in so that you can see. So automation, when I drew it in, it's um, with the fader, you can see that it actually is putting in points on the mixer. So each of these points is showing you a decibel level. So minus two dB is actually telling you what the volume is. So if I grab one of these points, I can move them ahead or behind in time and I can push it up and I can pull it down and I can adjust where each of these are. Now, moving it to the right will erase everything if I let go. But if I pull back, then it remains where it was before. So I'm going to just change the automation so that you can see. Now, if I go to a spot that doesn't have automation, let's just move over a little bit, there we go. I'm gonna change the pencil tool. So I'm gonna select my pencil tool. With the pencil tool, I can go in and I can draw in automation, look at that. And the more zoomed in you are, the more accurate it is with each of the drawings that you do for automation. I can also select the automation select tool and then grab my automation. It will grab my automation, hopefully it does. And then you should be able to option drag it. So look at that, see? You can copy your automation from one verse to another verse and so on. And lastly, this next tool that I'm gonna show you, which is really cool. I'm just gonna make a long point here. This is a fade in. Let's try and do a fade in. So I got all the way down, all the way up in volume. This is rare that you'd go all the way up like that. But you can see this is a fade in in volume. So. I'm gonna grab my automation curve tool, and if I select the automation curve tool, notice that I can make that a ramp, an S curve, an exponential curve, or uh, you know whatever, depending on how I set up the curve. So it's parabolic. All the different uh, curve types are here, depending on where you are. Some people, it can get a little bit frustrating depending on where you are. So then your curve um, can set up so that it's not just a linear volume change as well. So very nice to have that tool as well. So then that is your automation. A for automation to turn that on and off. And then within your mix page, you can also turn your automation on with the different values over here. It's always nice to be in read mode for safety mode once you're done all of that. So that's automation. Thank you for watching. This is Jason with PlugRadar.com. If you want, you can subscribe to our channel on YouTube. We'd appreciate that. You can subscribe to our newsletter on our website at www.plugrader.com. It will um, then allow you to know when we've posted a new video. Uh, and check out our, our other videos on Logic Pro X and leave some comments and let us know what you think. On PlugRadar, you can also check out reviews on other plugins. So thanks for watching.